What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, just finished watching Survivor Series, and as a whole, I enjoyed it, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. For the matches that I did watch, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the show for the most part. I'm gonna give my ratings at the end of the show, but I'm gonna talk about the matches that I did watch in order and give my thoughts and opinions on the matches itself, the outcomes, and and hopefully, you know, to see where things go in the future with both brands. But first things first, let's get right into it. Um, I want to talk about the men's um, traditional Survivor Series match. Um, overall, it was okay for me. Uh, I preferred last year's, obviously, because last year's Survivor Series involved NXT, so I thought that was pretty dope, which I do think they need to continue doing that, and they need to bring that back. Definitely gets the NXT talent some more exposure to the, the casual crowd. But um, this year's men's Survivor Series match was, it was okay. It was okay at best. Of course, it could have benefited from a crowd, but um, it was just weird booking-wise. You know, you want your Survivor Series match to seem like any side, either side could win. But this year, it, it they literally squashed the Raw roster. I mean, the SmackDown roster. Raw squashed the SmackDown roster. I don't think there's ever been a time, correct me if I'm wrong, where <clears throat> I want to say that the either side of Raw or SmackDown didn't get a single elimination. I could be wrong. Correct me if I am, but... I've never seen that before. Literally, no one got eliminated on the Raw side. Everyone got eliminated on the SmackDown side. Um, and it all started with Seth Rollins. When Seth Rollins got on his knees and basically was saying this is for the greater good and allowed Sheamus to bro kick him into oblivion, I was just sitting there like, what? What 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 the hell is this? So, and, and I get it, he's a heel, but there's heels on the SmackDown side of things, and they're coming together so they can win for the brand. What the hell was that? And even after it happened, I'm more upset that the SmackDown roster didn't beat his ass, because I'm sorry. I, I, I grew up in the Attitude Era. Can you imagine Stone Cold being the leader of Raw or SmackDown, and one of his teammates decides to give themselves up to the other team to purposely lose can you imagine stone cold not doing nothing no you know what would happen stone cold would start whooping his ass bro he would beat him into submission they would have to cart him off to the back he wouldn't even care about the opponents he would just whoop his ass i don't know why None of the SmackDown roster did the exact same thing. That's probably what upset me the most. If you, I would have beat his ass, bro. That made no sense. And from there, it just it just went downhill. There were some cool matchups, but I really didn't too much care until like Jay Uso was the last person in the match, and they gave you some type of teases, like maybe he can at least eliminate somebody. He was super kicking everybody, but ultimately. The, the number of games was too much. The number of game was too much. And uh, he ended up uh, losing. And Raw won. No one got eliminated. I, I was like, okay, this this is kind of a, a, a weird way to start off the show. So I was like, uh, all right, he did. Like, I didn't even know what to say, honestly. I was just kind of more shocked that they actually didn't get a single elimination. So that one was, it was hit or miss for me. Um, the match that I did enjoy, there was other matches I skipped. Uh, the next match I actually watched was Sasha versus Asuka. I enjoyed that match thoroughly. It did. It was kind of slow at first, but I liked the mind games. They were playing with each other, and it was a very good match, man. I, I like to see the women holding those championships with such high regard and i think they're on the right people oscar is definitely the right person to hold the raw uh title and sasha is definitely the right person to hold the uh the uh, smackdown title and in my opinion i think the right person won it was a hard fought victory it wasn't easy like they were literally chain wrestling they were going at it trying to submit each other i enjoyed it 
Sasha getting the dub. She definitely does need the dub and needs to continue to hold on to that belt. So, um, yeah, man, the outcome for that one was enjoyable. I enjoyed that match for sure. It's definitely worth rewatching if you guys just want to check out the show just for highlights of different matches. That's a match worth watching for sure. Um, I did see some parts of the women's uh, uh, match the women's survivor series match uh i kind of skimmed through towards the end honestly and that, and that sucks because the women do deserve time but i hadn't really been t following any of the women other than nia Jax has been constantly putting lana i think she's been putting lana through tables like every week just constantly just putting her through a table i'm like yo why <laughs> why are you doing this bro like i i, I don't i don't get the i don't get the reason why she's doing this but lana has been constantly been put through tables and ultimately lana is the one that won the match <laughs> for them which was kind of weird it was cool to see bianca belair be the last woman to try to hold off uh nia Jax and uh Shayna baszler that was pretty interesting to see um it was crazy how they set it up where Shayna pretty much gets disqualified because she held on too long as Bianca Belair puts her hand over the bottom rope. That was their way to get her out of the match. And it was nice to see uh, Bianca Belair just just throw <laughs> Nia Jax into the front row. That was pretty cool. It was nice to see. But ultimately, uh, yeah, the person that's been getting power bombed and power slammed through the goddamn table for the past couple weeks ends up winning for... Uh, raw which once again it was like eh i didn't really too much care for the match it was just like eh it, it was it was okay it was serviceable which sucks you you want your survivor series matches to be the the matches that people want to see and this year for me personally they were just kind of hit and miss honestly um and of course the main event for me the main event is the main reason why i even wanted to check out this pay-per-view and it is worth it is worth watching just for the main event alone drew versus roman was everything i wanted it to be i just wish there was a crowd this match to me was fan goddamn tastic they made drew look like a million goddamn bucks as he should he's the guy that beat brock lesnar in five minutes you don't have him lose very easily they made him look incredible roman didn't know what to do this was how I wanted it to be booked because I knew Roman was going to win, but I wanted to be in a situation where Roman is so frustrated. There is nothing he can do to put him away. I, I took some notes of just highlights of this match that I enjoyed. First thing I enjoyed, Drew using the Kimura lock. That little exchange where he reversed the momentum and put Roman Reigns in the Kimura lock. I love that. I love that shades of what Brock Lesnar used to do to Roman all the time. I like that. That I don't. That was that was a nice nice surprise. Um, uh, one thing I also did like this was a nice little setup. So they get to the outside of the ring. I want to say and Roman Reigns hit a Samoan drop. Like he kind of he kind of. Uh, I guess you could say it was like a, at first it was like a suplex. He flipped them over onto the announce table. Then the announce table didn't break. So he hit like a Samoan drop onto the announce table, broke the table. He's sitting on an apron. Drew is still stirring. This was a nice barricade spot because they set it up camera wise perfectly. Roman just darts off the ring apron. And I mean, he tackles him, spears him through this long sectional of the barricade look beautiful that was like okay this was a nice setup you're thinking okay well at this point it's over he gets him in the ring and he kicks out bro i'm like oh my goodness bro they have built this man drew as just this unstoppable force hits him with a spear still kicks out bro and i'm like i started to believe well maybe maybe drew could win this like they're setting it up like as drew could possibly win this match and then he hits the claymore kick on him because they're, they're building up this claymore kick is just this unstoppable thing he hits the claymore kick on him, and of course roman falls and of course the referee does the absolute most oh oh and just flies and falls out the ring i'm like oh it's over 
I knew as soon as that riff flopped his silly ass out the ring, I knew it was over. The match was done. At that point, there's no referee. Of course, Jay comes down. I had a feeling Jay was going to get involved. Um, and Roman hits him with a low blow. Hits him with a, a low blow. And then, of course, Jay hits him with a super kick. Then uh, Roman hits his guillotine. Puts him in the guillotine hold. Drew trying to fight out of it. Ultimately, he passes out. Doesn't tap out. Passes out. And um, Roman ends up uh, winning the, uh, the champion versus champion match. And... That's that's pretty much how it ends. Like I kind of expected, there was going to be some shenanigans because it in the way they booked it, <clears throat> Roman couldn't get the job done. He could not get the job done clean. There was no, he couldn't beat him. And I like that it makes Drew still look strong. That it took some cheating just to put him away. So I I, I enjoyed that. It still makes Drew look strong. And Roman still is the top heel and he needs to hold the championship. Him and Jay embrace at the top of the stage. I thought this match was fantastic. This is what bumped up my rating for this show. Honestly, this match alone bumped up my rating for this show only because it was just fantastic i enjoyed this match this is a match i can definitely go back and watch again um and after that of course it was cool to see the legends pay their respect to uh the undertaker since this is his last uh appearance on wwe television in this capacity which honestly has been a long time coming and it's so fitting that he debuted at survivor series so it would make sense for him to to hang it up at survivor series um it was cool to see him I, it, once again, even though they're bringing in, they're piping in the thank you taker chants, it's it's always better when the crowd is there because you can feel that. You know what I'm saying? And I know the situations that uh, the whole world is in right now doesn't allow that, but it would have been cool to see that. So it was it was a heartfelt moment. And if you've seen the Taker documentary on WWE Network, you kind of get a gist of that, you know, just throughout the whole documentary. So it was cool to see him just, you know, be in the character one more time. And I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed Undertaker's career, man. Undertaker has had a very, very illustrious wrestling career, man. He's been with the WWE since day one. And honestly, he is the leader of the locker room. Like, everyone knows who The Undertaker is. I don't even know if y'all know, but Snoop Dogg did a live, I want to say, the day before yesterday, as, as of me filming this uh, video, the day before yesterday, I want to say, he was on Instagram Live with Snoop Dogg. I think that's dope. Like, people know who The Undertaker is. It doesn't matter if you're in a rap. It doesn't matter what music you're into, what career you have. You know who The Undertaker is. Those are it's like those are names that are synonymous. You got The Rock, you got Ric Flair, you got Hulk Hogan, you got Stone Cold, and you got The Undertaker. These are names that will never be forgotten. Long after they pass, people will always know who these individuals are. And The Undertaker, he he was ahead of his time. He is the one person for the longest. He stood by kayfabe, and that's what it was, bro. He stood by it. He believed in it. He believed in that character. He believed in the gimmick, and it worked. So, once again, thank you to Undertaker. You know, for just the, the many, many, many of great matches and great times. We appreciate all that you've done for the wwe and entertaining us and putting your body on the line so so many times so just want to make that uh, announcement to all of the undertaker fans out there i know there's a lot of you out there it should be because he's a legend you feel me but um yeah overall show was great man i enjoyed it for the matches that i did see um and yeah this for me was this if i had to give a rating i would give this a seven just off the matches that I did see, and that's why I love the WWE Network, because you can fast forward through filler matches you don't want to see. Now, of course, you could be like, well, you can't really give her a whole rating like that because you didn't watch all the matches. Damn that. It's my channel. That's what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to do. So, off the matches that I did see and overall enjoyment of it, I'm still give this like a 7 out of 10 for me personally. So, comment down below. What y'all give, what's y'all rating for Survivor Series this year? I want to know what's y'all rating, what's y'all favorite match from this year, and also, what's your favorite 
Undertaker match, man. I want to know all three of these things, man. Down below in the comment section, let's get the discussion going. You guys definitely show love when I do these thoughts and opinions video. So I want to get y'all thoughts and y'all opinions on this pay-per-view and you know just start a discussion down below but i appreciate all the love and support road to 30k appreciate y'all kicking with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace